The animation begins with Lydia welcoming everyone to a tall, spooky haunted house. During her dramatic performance, she introduces herself as a spiritual guide, hinting that it's possible for the living and the dead to live peacefully together. At that moment, Lydia welcomes special guests, EMT and Judith, who share their creepy paranormal experiences. However, in the middle of the show, Lydia starts feeling unwell, so they decide to end the performance early. Looking shaken, Lydia heads to the bathroom, followed by her worried boyfriend, Rory, who asks if she's okay. Lydia brushes him off, blaming her bad day and the two shows she's already done. Soon after, Rory tries to calm her down by grabbing her pills and telling her she doesn't need them. But as Lydia's condition worsens, Rory panics, grabs the pills from the trash, and gives them back to her. Soon after, Lydia's stepmother, Delia, calls her for help. Lydia rushes over and finds Delia crying uncontrollably at work. It's then that a horrible truth is revealed that Lydia's father has passed away. Through a flashback, Lydia sees how it happened. On his way home from a birdwatching trip, his plane crashed. Though he survived the crash, his fate turned tragic when a shark attacked and killed him. The scene shifts back to Lydia and Delia as they talk about the need to inform Astrid about the tragedy. In the land of the dead, a young man asks an old janitor for directions. The janitor, clearly tired of his job, points lazily to a door before resting. But in his distraction, he makes a terrible mistake, electrocuting himself and dying for the second time. On the other side, Dolores appears in a dramatic way. Her body parts are scattered in different boxes, but she carefully puts herself back together with staples, returning to her impressive, iconic look. Dolores is looking for Beetlejuice and questions the old man who just got electrocuted. When he refuses to give her information, Dolores cruelly sucks his soul, leaving him with no spirit left. Meanwhile, Astrid is at school. Lydia tries to call her to tell her about her grandfather's death, but Astrid doesn't pick up. This forces Lydia and Delia to go to the school to deliver the news in person. On their way, they mention that Charles's body, Astrid's grandfather, is being taken to Winter River. When they arrive, Delia tells Astrid about her grandfather's passing and urges her to show some empathy toward her mom, especially during this hard time. But Astrid responds coldly, telling Lydia to stay away, saying that everyone knows she is her mom, but she prefers being with ghosts instead of her own daughter. On the other hand, Beetlejuice is with his strange crew. Not long after, Wolf Jackson, known as an actor but actually a worker in the underworld, contacts Beetlejuice with a warning. He tells Beetlejuice that his name came up in an ongoing investigation, mentioning the woman who's after him, and it's the same one who put herself back together. There, Jackson warns Beetlejuice that this woman is a soul sucker and seems to be seeking revenge. He advises Beetlejuice to hide, saying there's no way to escape his fate, but as usual, Beetlejuice completely ignores the warning. The story shifts back to Lydia's dysfunctional family at Charles' funeral. Surrounded by relatives and loved ones, the atmosphere is filled with deep sadness. After the ceremony, Astrid approaches her mom and admits that sometimes she feels like being dead would be better than being alive. She also mentions that she hasn't been to a funeral since her dad passed away. Worried, Lydia suggests that Astrid see a therapist, which makes Astrid angry. She accuses her mom of always avoiding talking about her dad. Lydia calmly explains that she loved her dad very much, but their relationship ended long before the accident, something Astrid needs to understand. In the land of the dead, Charles, now without his head, searches for a waiting room. But right after he leaves, Dolores, the soul sucker, appears again, draining the receptionist so she can disguise herself. Back in the underworld, Beetlejuice meets Wolf Jackson again. Jackson shows him a picture of Dolores and asks if he knows her. Beetlejuice tries to dodge the topic, pretending not to know who she is. But the truth soon comes out that Dolores is Beetlejuice's ex-wife. Through a flashback, told in Italian, Beetlejuice shares his story with Dolores. After being sentenced to live among the dead, Beetlejuice met her one dark and scary night and was immediately mesmerized by her eyes. They got married in a traditional ceremony. But what Beetlejuice didn't know was that his beautiful bride was hiding a dark secret. Dolores was the leader of a deadly cult. Like a spider weaving its web, 
She lured Beetlejuice for her dark purposes. Her quest for immortality required two important things, his life and Beetlejuice's soul. Even though Beetlejuice admits he has strange tastes, he still had limits, and that's what eventually led to their breakup. Back at Charles's funeral, Rory tries to make peace with Astrid, but she rejects him, saying that her mom is naive for staying with Rory, even though she knows he's only using her. However, Astrid adds that it's Lydia's problem, not hers. Later, at Winter River, the haunted house feels gloomy after Charles's death, as if the house itself has died too. Many people are now interested in buying the legendary property. In his speech, Rory recalls how Charles always wanted to live life to the fullest and chase his own dreams. Inspired, Rory uses the moment to propose to Lydia, suggesting they get married on his favorite day, Halloween, which is only two days away. Rory expresses his desire to spend the rest of his life with Lydia. When Lydia hesitates, Rory comments that with everything around them being so sad, it feels like their love is dying too. After thinking it over, Lydia kisses him, which Rory takes as a yes, and the family celebrates. Meanwhile, Astrid, clearly upset, storms off in anger. Riding her bike in frustration, Astrid causes a traffic jam, almost gets into an accident, and eventually crashes into a neighbor's fence. A young man named Jeremy helps her up and asks what she's doing in Winter River. Astrid mentions that she's there for Charles and starts talking about her own dad. She explains that her dad was a free spirit who split up with her mom when he decided to move to Brazil, where her mom has lived her whole life. Finally, Astrid reveals that her mom is Lydia, confirming the family tension and the ghosts of their past. In the scary underworld, Wolf Jackson, the death officer, gets an alarming report. Dolores has started her revenge, destroying everything in her path to find Beetlejuice. The chaos she's leaving behind makes it urgent for Jackson to find Beetlejuice before Dolores does. Meanwhile, Beetlejuice, always looking for opportunities, flips through the newspaper and sees news about Charles's death, along with Lydia's name. There, Beetlejuice immediately recognizes this tragedy as the perfect chance to reconnect with the living world. At the same time, Astrid is sent to the attic to store some boxes. While exploring, she finds a model of Winter River. In the model, Astrid comes across a strange ad offering a way to contact Beetlejuice. Digging deeper, Astrid discovers a box labeled Richard, and inside are old photos of her parents. Just then, Lydia walks into the attic. Together, mother and daughter look at the photos, feeling a mix of nostalgia and sadness. However, when Lydia sees the ad for Beetlejuice, her expression changes. Disturbed, Lydia warns Astrid that saying Beetlejuice's name three times could have terrible consequences, and she forbids her from returning to the attic. Upset, Lydia orders her out. Right after this, Lydia seeks comfort from her stepmother, Delia. Lydia talks about the rift that's happening between her and Astrid, reminding her of how things were in the past when they didn't get along. Lydia also mentions the disturbing ad about Beetlejuice that Astrid found, and reveals something she's kept to herself that she has seen Beetlejuice again. Not just in her mind, but in a way that feels too real to be just a hallucination. Feeling stressed and needing an escape, Astrid decides to visit Jeremy, the boy she recently met. In his room, Jeremy shows her his collection of records and books, and they start opening up about their lives. Jeremy shares that he's dealing with family problems. His dad had an accident and is now stuck in a cycle of alcoholism that he can't break. Feeling empathetic, Astrid admits that her dad's body was never found, leaving her with an empty feeling that won't go away. Jeremy suggests that maybe her mom, Lydia, with her psychic abilities, could try to contact him. But Astrid explains that her mom already tried, and even she couldn't do it. Soon after, their conversation shifts when they talk about Lydia's upcoming wedding, scheduled for Halloween. At that time, Astrid admits she doesn't really want to attend. And Jeremy, trying to be supportive, suggests they could spend the day together instead, maybe eating pizza or doing something fun, to help her not feel so alone. Meanwhile, Rory is busy with wedding preparations, dreaming of throwing a big event. But Lydia doesn't share his excitement and prefers something more simple and intimate. However, what's bothering Lydia the most isn't the wedding planning, but the signs of Beetlejuice that seem to be haunting her. Can't take it anymore, Lydia runs to the attic, desperate, 
and starts shouting for Beetlejuice to leave her alone. Worried about her strange behavior, Rory follows her to the attic and asks what's going on. Exhausted and overwhelmed, Lydia finally decides to tell Rory the truth about Beetlejuice, admitting that Beetlejuice isn't just someone from her past, but a real threat who has returned to her life. Carrying the burden of her scary experiences from when she was a teenager, Lydia opens up fully to Rory. She tells him how Beetlejuice, the trickster demon, referring to events from the first movie, terrorized her family and tried to force her to marry him so he could return to the living world. Even though she escaped that nightmare, Lydia now feels that the demon has come back to haunt her. With a shaky voice, she explains to Rory that if you say his name three times, Beetlejuice will reappear. But at that time, Rory doesn't take her seriously, thinking it's just a psychological trauma, and believes the best way to help her face her fear is to confront it symbolically. Determined, he says the dreaded words, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Instantly, they're transported to Beetlejuice's bizarre office. Shortly after, the demon appears before them in his typical way, showing frightening visions and playing with their fears. Their shock grows when Beetlejuice introduces them to his baby, a creature that looks nothing like him, adding to the strangeness of the situation. Rory faints, and a terrified Lydia, desperate to leave Beetlejuice's office, says home three times. In an instant, they're back at the model of Winter River, where Beetlejuice can be seen singing a romantic song, teasing Lydia from his tiny world. At that time, Rory, not fully understanding what just happened, thinks it was a shared dream or hallucination and decides to forget about it. They leave, though Lydia is still deeply shaken by what just occurred. Angry and scared, Lydia quickly tells Delia and Astrid that they need to leave the house immediately and destroy the model because it's connected to Beetlejuice. However, Astrid, who has made plans with Jeremy, begs her not to leave, asking them to stay a little longer. Reluctantly, Lydia agrees, and the next day, she takes Astrid to Jeremy's house. When they arrive, Astrid and Jeremy talk about their costumes, as they plan to go trick-or-treating on Halloween. But with a serious look, Jeremy admits that he would rather stay home with Astrid. But then, their moment of closeness suddenly turns supernatural when, as they kiss, they start floating in the air. Frightened, Astrid pulls away and asks Jeremy who he really is, realizing that he's not just a normal boy. Sadly, Jeremy reveals the truth. He's a ghost. He explains that years ago, he used to sneak beer from his dad, and on one fateful day, he fell from his treehouse and died instantly. Since then, he's been stuck in the house, unable to leave beyond the fence. But when he met Astrid, she could see him, something that's never happened with anyone else before. There, Jeremy admits that he really likes Astrid and wants them to be together. However, Astrid, shocked by the revelation, tells him she can't be with him because he's dead and she's still alive. Determined, Jeremy tells Astrid that there is a way they can be together, but warns her not to tell her mom. In return for her help, Jeremy promises Astrid that she will be able to see her dad one last time and say goodbye. Meanwhile, Lydia, still uneasy about her daughter's safety, casually mentions to a friend that she left Astrid on Jefferson Street. Her friend reacts immediately with concern, saying that Street has always given her a bad feeling, especially since she could never sell the murder house at number 125, and it's the exact place where Lydia left Astrid. Moments later, Lydia's friend reveals that Jeremy isn't just a normal boy, but someone dangerous. 23 years ago, Jeremy killed his own parents, and when the police tried to catch him, he ran to his treehouse. While trying to escape, he fell, broke his neck, and died instantly. Hearing this, a panicked Lydia rushes to Jeremy's house to save Astrid. Meanwhile, Jeremy leads Astrid to a mysterious door, unaware of what's waiting for them. Astrid reads a spell Jeremy gave her, and together, they cross into the world of the dead as the door closes behind them. Lydia arrives too late to stop them. At the same time, Delia, Lydia's stepmother, is overwhelmed with sadness over losing Charles. Unable to bear the pain, Delia decides to end her life in a tragic and surreal way by letting two snakes bite her. Still worried about what happened to Astrid, Lydia realizes her only hope is to ask Beetlejuice for help. Lydia brings Jeremy's book, hoping to find answers. 
Beetlejuice reveals that Astrid has chosen to trade her life for Jeremy's, a one-way ticket to the afterlife. Desperate to save her daughter, Lydia has no choice but to agree to Beetlejuice's terrible deal, which to marry him, so his ex-wife, Dolores, will stop chasing him. Even though the deal is awful, Lydia agrees to save Astrid. They sign a contract, and Beetlejuice opens a door to the world of the dead, taking Lydia with him. However, as they cross over, they forget to close the door, allowing wandering souls from the afterlife to escape into the living world, causing unimaginable chaos. Meanwhile, in the world of the dead, Wolf Jackson gets an alert about a serious breach, and it's code 699, meaning a living person has entered the land of the dead. Jackson quickly sends his agents to find Beetlejuice and Lydia. On the other side, Delia, who is now dead, appears in the afterlife passport office. At the same time, Astrid starts to feel strange. Finally, Jeremy admits that the spell Astrid read traded her life for his. Just then, agents from the world of the dead take Astrid to process the life exchange, while Jeremy is sent to Window 11 to get his soul stamp because the life transfer isn't complete without it. During all this, Astrid gets a chance to see her dad, Richard, who now works there. Soon after, Beetlejuice and Lydia arrive on a train heading to the afterlife. Right before it leaves, Lydia spots Astrid and, with effort, manages to pull Astrid off the train. After that, the two of them run toward an emergency exit and end up in a strange desert, where the planet Saturn can be seen in the distance. As they try to escape, strange creatures begin stalking them. But right then, Richard, Astrid's dad, appears. Richard tells them that even though they couldn't always see him, he's always been watching over them, and he will help them get out. But first, they need to restore Astrid's life. Elsewhere, Wolf Jackson gets news that the afterlife guards found the open door in Lydia's house and closed it. However, they still haven't found Beetlejuice or Lydia, though they did manage to capture Bob, Beetlejuice's loyal follower for questioning. Meanwhile, Delia, now in the world of the dead, feels desperate and seeks Beetlejuice's help. Hearing that Beetlejuice agrees, but only if Delia helps him complete his marriage to Lydia, since Lydia ran off to save her daughter. On the other side, Lydia, Astrid, and Richard finally arrive, but it seems too late to reverse the life swap. However, Beetlejuice, always sneaky, is waiting for them. Without any mercy, Beetlejuice sends Jeremy to the underworld and makes sure that the deal between him and Lydia stays in place. Lydia and Astrid manage to return to the living world, just in time, to stop Lydia's wedding with Rory. When they ask about Delia, they find out that thanks to Beetlejuice, Lydia's stepmother has also been brought back to life. Delia shows up with Beetlejuice, ready to continue the plan. Beetlejuice then reminds everyone about the contract Lydia signed, forcing her to keep her promise to marry him, right in front of Rory and a group of influencers who were gathered as witnesses. Soon after, Beetlejuice injects Rory with truth serum, and Rory confesses to everyone that he only wanted to marry Lydia for her money. He also reveals that his previous fiancé didn't die, but that he left her to meet other women to take advantage of. Furious, Lydia, with the help of boxing gloves provided by Beetlejuice, punches Rory, exposing his true nature. At that moment, Beetlejuice turns all the guests into birds and manipulates the pastor to officiate his perfect wedding with Lydia, while he sings his own version of MacArthur Park adding his usual grotesque flair to the scene. Suddenly, the air in the haunted house filled with tension as Wolf Jackson made his grand entrance, not quietly, but with the full grandeur fitting of the world of the dead. Tall and glowing in his spectral uniform, Wolf Jackson marched in front of an impressive army of afterlife soldiers. Soon after, he called out Beetlejuice's name, his voice echoing through the room and bouncing off the walls. Wolf Jackson announced that, by order of the High Court of the Afterlife, Beetlejuice must be captured. And Beetlejuice, who had seemed completely in control up to this point, slowly turned with an evil grin and told Wolf Jackson he was too late. With a snap of his fingers, Beetlejuice unleashed a wave of dark energy. In an instant, all the Afterlife soldiers froze in place, trapped in a magical paralysis. Their stiff bodies looked like statues, unable to move. Wolf Jackson was also frozen, his face tense, trying to fight it, 
But soon he too fell victim to the spell, his eyes still burning with anger, even though he couldn't move. Beetlejuice laughed, circling the frozen soldiers and mocking them. But just as Beetlejuice thought he had won, the room's temperature dropped even more, and out of the shadows appeared a figure Beetlejuice knew all too well, and it's Dolores, his ex-wife. A deadly yet elegant woman. At that time, her haunting silhouette in a black dress seemed to absorb the light, and her gaze was filled with cold, vengeful hatred. Dolores called Beetlejuice's name with a voice as sharp as a blade, and then walked forward with deadly calm. She told him the game had gone on long enough, and that it was time for Beetlejuice to come with her forever. Beetlejuice's smile faltered. Dolores wasn't someone to be taken lightly. With every step she took, shadows seemed to wrap around Beetlejuice as if the underworld itself was claiming him. In a moment of pure desperation, Beetlejuice starts backing away, trying to find an escape from what's coming. Meanwhile, in another part of the church, Astrid and Delia are frantically flipping through a spell book, their hands moving quickly in panic. Finally, they find the spell they need. Delia, her hands shaking, is determined to save her granddaughter. Astrid reads the words aloud, and the air in the room shifts. From the depths of the desert dimension, a giant creature appears, and it's the same one that tried to attack Astrid and her mom before. Suddenly, the massive beast roars and leaps toward Dolores and Rory, grabbing them in its jaws and pulling them into the afterlife. Now free from Dolores' threat, Beetlejuice regains his confidence and turns his attention back to Lydia, ready to claim his prize. He is set to marry her and complete his plan. But before Beetlejuice can do anything, Astrid steps forward with determination. With a firm look, Astrid reminds him that he broke code 699, the law that forbids living people from entering the afterlife without permission. By breaking this rule, any contract Beetlejuice made with Lydia is now void. Shortly after, Beetlejuice freezes for a moment, a flicker of panic crossing his face for the first time. On the other hand, Lydia, feeling relieved, takes control of the situation and says it's time for Beetlejuice to go. With a serious look, Lydia repeats the fateful words Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. In a burst of chaotic energy, Beetlejuice begins to unravel. His body spins and falls apart in an explosion, leaving nothing but dust floating in the air. Lydia and Astrid exchange looks, knowing they've finally freed themselves from the threat that had haunted them for so long. The freezing spell lifted, and Wolf Jackson, now free, quickly stood up, shaking the cold from his body. Maintaining his strong authority, Wolf Jackson approached Delia with a serious tone, explaining that although she had been brought back to life temporarily, the snake's poison still flowed through her, and her time in the living world was over. Delia, however, showed no fear or sadness. Instead, she smiled peacefully, saying she was ready because she would soon be with Charles again. With that, Wolf Jackson escorted Delia to the afterlife, and Delia bid farewell to Lydia and Astrid with a warm smile and a peaceful wave. It was not a sad parting, but a reunion with the man she had always loved. Meanwhile, Lydia, now reflecting on her life, realized it was her time to move forward. She understood that the dead had been with her long enough, and she had let them go. It was time to make new memories with the people she truly loved. In the end, Astrid was seen at her new school, getting married, and eventually having a baby. Everything seemed perfect until the baby opened its eyes, revealing a familiar look and its Beetlejuice's reincarnation. But this scene was only a dream. Lydia suddenly woke up in her bed and found Beetlejuice lying next to her, smiling mischievously. Before she could react, Beetlejuice vanished into the air with a haunting whisper. The film ended with the eerie sense that although Beetlejuice had disappeared for now, his presence still lingered, leaving an unsettling feeling of his potential return. The animation ends. The moral lesson from this animation is never trust a guy who throws away your pills and then gives them back cause it's like losing your plane to a bird watching trip and then getting eaten by a shark.